This is the plaintiff, Swazette Simmons, and her witness, Jason Rouse. Swazette says her dog, Chuck, was viciously attacked when Jason was walking him on a leash by the defendant's out-of-control pit bull, who was a menace to society. Chuck hasn't been the same since the attack. The defendant owes her $5,000, and she's suing him for it, here in court today. This is the defendant, Ronald. He says his leashed pit bull noticed the plaintiff's unleashed dog, and when he ran over, a fight ensued. The plaintiff wasn't even there that day, and he can't believe she actually has the nerve to sue him for $5,000 when the fight was their dog's fault. He's accused of having vicious propensities. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiffs say their dog Chuck was viciously mauled by the defendant's pit bull, and they want the defendant to pay up. The defendant says no way that the plaintiff's dog was unleashed and he was the aggressor. It's the case of vicious propensities. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Simmons, uh, apparently, according to you, your dog was attacked by Mr. Ronald's dog. You weren't walking the dog at the time Mr. Rouse was, so let me first hear from you, Mr. Rouse. What happened? Yes, um, I was walking the dog. Um, I was going to the store. Um, I went to the store, and I um, connected the dog to the fire extinguisher. So when I came out of Are the you store— Are referring to the fire hydrant? <clears throat> yes. So you tied the leash to the fire hydrant? Yes. Um, I had went inside the store, and when I came out, um, I had got my dog, and I had walked across the street to walk home. So I got past a guy at the bus stop, and he was saying something to me, but I had my headphones on. So when I took off my headphones and I asked him what, all of a sudden I seen Mr. Um, Ronnie's dog running across the street and I, and I heard the cars beeping and stuff, and he was chasing after the dog, and I grabbed my dog close to me. So, you know, when his dog came close enough and jumped on my dog, my dog end up, ended up biting his dog, and I'm pulling, the, I'm pulling the leash, trying to, you know, have my dog let go, and I end up falling, and the leash came came, you know, out of my hand and, you know, uh, Mr. Ronnie, uh, he was on the ground with both of the dogs and they were pulling him um, inside the grass and stuff. And then I grabbed my dog's back legs and I lifted them up and my dog, you know, um, it just um, released and came over by me. And, and, you know, he took his dog and ran across the street and went upstairs inside the house. Um, Mr. Ronald, what do you say happened? Um, I live, Your Honor, I live over the store, you know, and I've been here, I just moved in this apartment for two months, you know, and I've never seen this guy before, you know. So all of a sudden, you know, because I have, I have my dog on, on my leash and, and this is- Where, this where is are you going? Mr. Ronald, sit right down, here. sit down. Okay. This is, you had your this dog on that right leash? Here. Yes. Is that and what this, he had on this, this day house. when this happened? Yes, yes. So you know, he had a so harness on and he had a leash yes. on? Yes. Okay. And what happened? So, and when he, when he comes with his dog, and I'm telling him, I don't even know this guy. I've never even seen him before, you know? So next thing you know, they, when his dog got right by my dog, they started thinking, you know? So now- Was his he, dog he, on he, a he, leash? He, no. I didn't see no leash, you know, because when he fell. So his dog was fell, not, a, like he, just a second. So I want to make sure I understand. His dog is not on a leash and your dog is on the leash and the <laughs> harness that you just showed me. Yes. I didn't see no leash, uh, Your Honor. Only know, only thing I know, when he fell, I, I told him, grab his legs, you know, and I'm keeping Okay. Going, and what were you, you know? what were you doing with your dog? Were you going out for a walk on the leash? Yes, he was, he, he was going to the bathroom, you know. Okay. Ms. Simmons, let me hear from you. Did you ever go? I know you weren't there when it happened, but did you ever go back and talk to anybody? Well, I got a call from Jason. He was yelling, screaming, and out of breath. I, I did show up there. When I got there, my dog had blood on him. 
and I started yelling, what happened? What happened? Where's the, where's the dog that did this? And Jason pointed at this time, Jason was in front of the store. Jason pointed up to the upstairs apartment where I seen Ronnie in the window. So I asked him, I said, well, can you come down and we can discuss this like adults? He came downstairs and um, I explained to him, I said, that's my baby. I said, what happened? And he began explaining to me what happened, how it happened. I actually was recording him, everything that he oh, said. Oh, you recorded him. him. Did you submit that did. into evidence? Okay. I definitely did. Um, what kind of dog do you have? I have a um, Staffordshire Terrier. A pit bull? Yes. And you have a pit bull also? Yes, I have a bull terrier. Okay. Your dog ran, is your dog got shot? You got the paperwork? Look. I was Where'd he here. come from? Here? He doesn't know. Yeah. I'm the door. Because that's in the doorway like this. Uh-huh. Because every time I come downstairs, I check because... You don't know who's outside, and... Oh. So <laughs> then when he ran across the street, I'm yelling at him, call that, call that, call that. Okay, here's you saying when he ran across the... Where is you walking the dog? Let's hear that again. Hold everything. Look, I was... Where'd he here. come from? Here? He doesn't know. Yeah. I'm the door. Because that's in the doorway like this. Uh-huh. Because every time I come downstairs, I check because... You don't know who's outside and... Oh. <laughs> so then when he ran across the street, I'm yelling at him, call that, call that, call that. Wait, okay. Did you hear yourself just say when he ran across the street? Did you know she was taping you? Yes. Yeah. If you did, why are you lying to me now and telling me you had a harness and a leash? Because I have you yes, on he, tape he, I, saying... Oh, the dog uh -huh. ran right across. I, I was standing here in the doorway, and I usually check, and then boom, she ran right across. So where's you walking the dog on a harness with a leash? You both face lied to me right now. Miss Simmons, why are you suing for $5,000? You, you took the dog to the vet because you couldn't get the rabies information and the shots information from him. So a few days later, you take the dog to the vet, and you end up getting a rabies shot for the dog, and that's $114. I get that. But you're suing for emotional distress and pain and suffering. Talk to me about that, because that's what makes up the rest of your 5000 Well, my dog is, is my son's service dog, his um, support dog. I have a son with disabilities, which I did explain at Tarani. Um, my dog is not only my dog, but he's been in my family since he's been eight weeks old. My dog haven't really been right um, since the attack. He, ha he hasn't been able to um, be my son's emotional support dog because he's been, he's been injured, laying around, taking medication, vomiting. He has, when you um, say he's injured, tell me how he's injured because I looked at the vet report and I didn't see an actual injury. So what kind of injury does he have? Well, he just, he laid around. I mean, I'm assuming he might have been sore because he, he's older. He's attached to like if I go into the bathroom or something he's right there with me and if I close the door and don't let him come in the bathroom with me now he's urinating and he's doing things he don't usually do he just hasn't really been interacting with my son like he should he lays in front of the fireplace and he sleeps unless we go in the bathroom he'll follow us he don't even really want to go outside we have a hard time getting him outside to the bathroom and stuff he's not a do fighter do you he see him in the neighborhood do you see Mr. Ronald in the neighborhood um I rolled by one day and he was outside. He takes his dog outside without a leash. He told me, my dog don't usually attack dogs. It attacks white people. It don't like white people. Oh, there we go. All right, Mr. Ronald, uh, what do you have to say for yourself? I've played for you the tapes of you saying point blank that the dog got away from you and ran out the door. So I ask you again, was your dog on a leash when this happened? No, ma'am. Well, so why did you lie to me? You're under oath. Why would you do that to well, these people? Because at, at, I walk him. I walk my dog with a leash, and 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 then at that time, yes, he did. He ran out the door. But you boy, but you bold faced lied to me and told me you had him on a leash when this happened. I apologize for that, Your Honor. Miss Simmons, you are certainly entitled to the hundred and fourteen dollars. That is a legitimate expense from what has happened. I am also going to assume, and let me tell you that this is kind of rare, 
um, that you're going to have to seek some psychological counseling for your dog, particularly since the dog is a therapy dog for your son. So, uh, Mr. Ronald, I got to tell you, this is probably a first for me on the people's court, but I really don't like it when people boldface mislead me and perjure themselves. So I'm going to assume there's going to be at least $1,000 in your damages there. And I'm going to order him to pay you $1,000 plus $114 for the rabies shot. Verdict for the plaintiff. Pay the lady. Well, the judge got rather aggravated at the defendant for lying to her. Bold-faced lie, as she put it. Ronald, uh, what do you think about that? That lie cost you $1,000. That happens, you know. Don't you feel bad that you that you lied on national television to the judge or the people's court? That's not good, no, you know. I made a mistake. Yeah, you made a big mistake. Okay, uh, Ms. Simmons, Mr. Rouse, uh, obviously, you know, you, you're going to get money now to help uh, repay the cost of the vet bills and a thousand dollars for. Hopefully, you can get some kind of care for the dog. Are you going to do that? I yes. am. I am yes. definitely. Okay, let's see what the judges have to say now. It would appear that the plaintiff prevailed here in large part because she had that video. I can't she man. shot that and she had the audio. She the is video. a it was smart a shaky, cookie. But you know, but she's a smart cookie. She wow. pressed record. She got him uh -huh. to make all the admissions because right. she's smart. She th that's this is a woman who watches the people's court. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Because she came in with an open and shut case based on the Now video. think about that. Think about how many times we as judges are in court. Mm. One side says one thing and another side says another right. and you can't decide you who's no telling the idea. truth and they just right. walk out without any... That's every day. That's almost every, every day. case. He every said, day. she said. Right. And, 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 and she's in a one-party consent state. And he just looks at me and goes, eh, I guess I was caught. Right. Yeah, sorry, Your Honor. Uh -huh. well, you're getting a lot of hot water in court if you pull that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, $1,000 in damages yeah. might be the least a of your words. Yeah. A, a, ju a judge will, st will, will, will sit there contempt. and, yeah. And, yeah. and contempt can get you locked up, not just fined. Uh, and I've, I've seen it happen uh, a number of times. Barry wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, do you watch any other court shows on television? If so, which ones are good? I gotta say, I like them all. I really do. I think court shows are just really interesting because they teach people something and they also entertain. And that's the best television. We'll see you next time.